Hey, this is Gromy, and you're watching Zombie Takeover TV. These are nights of the devil world. Eighteen wheels rolling down through Welcome to the Takeover. This is episode 30, and we're live here at uh, Gilbert's Music slash Groman's CDs and Tapes. How are you doing? Pretty good, Frank. Uh, I'm glad to be here. We're here with the uh, War Wrestling guys. We got Michael McCormick over here, and River Blackheart with us today. And we're going to talk about the upcoming uh, January 18th. Yeah. We're going to be bash. Fun. Now, how long has War Wrestling been going on here? Well, on the 18th, it'll be 11 years. Yeah, right. yeah. it's an 11-year anniversary show, hence the name War 11. Yeah, and then you're doing like a Hall of Fame thing also. Yeah, yeah. The, I can't wait for that. That actually, I thought was, uh, we walked out last year, we did it last year at our 10th anniversary show, and when I walked out to do the beginning of it, there were already 500 people in the building. Oh my God. And we thought it was going to be maybe 30. Yeah, last most year was the wrestlers. Last year was the first year we did it. We weren't expecting that many fans to show up for it. We, we made it an option for them. By a certain ticket that they bought, if they bought that certain ticket, they would allow them to come in early to watch that. <laughs> and we had no clue that you know we figured maybe fifty at the most. Yeah, it was it was packed. Who who is one of the few names that are in your Hall of Fame? Uh, Al Snow okay. last year was ah, inducted. Yeah. Uh, who else did we induct last year? We inducted beautiful Bur or uh, Crusher Klein, who mm -hmm. uh, was a mainstay Basically here. Like the Godfather of yeah. wrestling. He uh, ran the promotion here for. Quite some time after Al was done, uh, who, the, we we had a uh, Al's trainer uh, escapes me at the time. Maybe some help from the Peanut Gallery. <laughs> <laughs> help, help, please. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, I have all the names for this year in my head now. Who's well, some the of the Highlanders guys we have last year? Uh, yeah, Highlanders. the Highlanders are going in this them year from the, from the WWE. Yeah, absolutely. Painter. So you've guys had a few people that's okay. in your organization that's went on to the, you know the WWE or whatever. Yeah, we've that's had a few. Uh, that's awesome. Jillian Hall, for wow. example, we right when they first started. Still Jillian call her Hall, Jill. Yeah, was on a uh, was on that. shows as <laughs> Michaela Mercedes, and she went on to do it. Uh, John Chris, Mosley. Yeah. Or Dean Ambrose, who's on uh, he, member of the Shield. He's been he's been on some shows. Which same as same the, Seth Rollins. Yeah. Tyler Black, who Seth Rollins now. Uh, the Highlanders, Alex Shelley, Nigel McGuinness, Nigel McGuinness, uh, Chris Saban. Chris Saban wrestled on our show two days before he won his first ever X Division title for TNA. Jesus. Yeah, you guys, uh, the organization itself. When I watch the videos that are on on the U on YouTube and all that, it looks like it has the spirit of like old ECW yeah. and stuff like that. That's what I really like about it, like just the rawness of it. And well, that's what we talk about all the time. It, it's actually it's funny. We have a little bit of that because we have a there's a hardcore match. Mm -hmm. Brian Beach and Ron Mathis are just gonna rip each other apart uh, at the the show. But he actually thinks it's more like kind of like an old NWA show where we kind of pride ourselves like an old school mentality. Right, I've seen that. Yeah, matches no, we don't have, that. there's, yeah, there's not a lot of matches where you can see in other places where it's just like, here's 10,000 moves with no explanation. Yeah. Right? And everybody sits on their hands. This, this, this is, when we, we build up to things and the big show that we started having in January, that more or less, to put it in layman's terms, this is our WrestleMania. Every year. And we build up to it all year long. We don't, just it ain't you ain't gonna see a cage match on every single war show because it don't make sense you ain't gonna see a hardcore match on every single, it doesn't make sense right. stuff needs to make sense we've built up like what what i'm in right now I'm, i manage i used to manage sherman tank i used to manage chris hall as a team as bad company we were the longest reigning tag team champions like two years. In, the, in the promotion we've split Tank's given he he likes to give a shit now what the fans think. Man, because Sherman you were Tank a dick sound. to him the whole time. Sherman Tank. He sounds like a big guy. He, he's four hundred pounds. <laughs> Gee, that's a big guy. Slimming down to four hundred pounds. <laughs> Chris Hall is me. almost wow. as big. Chris Hall, me and Chris Hall are on the same page. And I've had control over Tank's contract up until November, so I've of what, course. What happened though? How how did that what happened? I'm a busy man, Hearn. Oh man. 
I'm a busy man. Busy guy. <laughs> he forgot to renew the contract. So now I was too busy with, I was too busy can kick getting, each one of their asses. I was too busy with Chris Hall's matches and Jeff Holloway, who I manage. And so basically, you put Tank on the back burner as well. Well, yeah, because he, he's not operating within 17 my years, game 400 plans, pounds, so. multiple titles. Yeah. The backbone of bad company. But yeah, what? okay, good job. His knees are too bad to be the backbone of bad company. I just got to carry But anyway, around. here's the thing. <laughs> Old January, since you refused to Jan- wear a belt. In January, shut up. I'm <laughs> talking to these guys. I'm not talking to Look you. Look at that. Wow. When he gets his ass kicked at this show by Sean going to have him afterwards. But we built it up. Gonna run like it's going to be last man he's standing. He's his pants up as he does it. It's going to be last man standing. <laughs> I always have to do that. That's right. Yeah, so after Hall gets knocked out. He won't get knocked out. It's going to be last man standing. But we built it up to this point. <laughs> We, they haven't touched each other. They couldn't touch each other because I've had Sherman Tank's contract. I wouldn't allow it to happen until he refused to renew it. But now, now this match means something. That's then. That, that's what I tried to get through Hall's head every time he wanted to get a piece of Tank. Is not now. The money ain't there. It's not worth it. It doesn't mean anything. Now it means something. Now we're getting a big payday. And that's how we do things at war. I mean, it matches when you're putting on big shows. Got to mean something. All the shows leading up to it. I'm not saying there ain't nothing good gonna happen on all that, but we do. There's a story to be right. told. Yeah, and I I think that's where a lot of it's lost it nowadays. It's where you know nobody has patience. Yeah. This is what I, I see. Every uh, every show has TV. to be the payoff. I see this on TV. I see it on, in other promotions. Yeah, yeah. No one has the patience to let a storyline mature. Now some people can get away with it. You know, like down Southern High stuff. There they do a lot of weekly shows down there. With or without rings, correct? Am I, uh, well, that, yeah, that was just something yeah. that they were marrying. Yeah, don't even get me started on. <laughs> yeah, sir, you, you can look at YouTube for a lot of podcasts about that one. Yeah. <laughs> but we run every other month, sometimes even bigger breaks than that when there's like the holidays and stuff like that. So it takes a little longer to get the story across, which for the most part we're pretty patient in doing it. I see it on TV all the time. It's... Three show, three TV shows, and they've changed angles already. Which how's that entertaining? Build up. Same way, there's pay per views every month. So all pay per view is now is you're paying for a Monday Night Raw. Is all you're paying for. You're nice. paying for a Monday Night Raw. You're paying yeah. thirty dollars for with a, with a new branding. Yeah, for crap they're going to show you the very next night and all the rematches. Right. Well, I, I think mean, too though it helps because we have a crowd that is different than a lot of other indie shows. Um, to me, that's the ECW yeah, aspect you guys were talking about. Right, they're more have, they're more loyal to where they'll come to every show. Like we did a show in Rockford and had a lot of people there at Parkway. Um, and, we do you know, a show, and they follow Fourth, all the stuff. And, Fourth of July, we you know, you to, you have two things happen, and yeah. they're going to remember, and it's going like he said, it's going to build, and they're going to be excited when they see the finish. Like we have people come from Lyman to come to this little dinky ass Bell Center on the Fourth of July because we're there putting on a free show. Hey, you can't beat that. I mean, you can't. Now let's run down the the, the event coming up. Let's uh, let's get down to these matches. Let's get down to business. And I want to say also his nickname. They called him Tank in high school, <laughs> but it was more because they, <laughs> he doesn't seem to know that. Well, it was more well, because he the, changes it all the time. Oh. That's the <laughs> It was more because of the size of the cannon than, you know, he, he's a big guy, but it was, you know, the size. Yeah, so, but anyways, yes, yeah, who's all, all true. Someone spent a little too much time in the shower. <laughs> Someone, gym class. Someone spent a little too much time together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so. All right. Go give them the rundown. That's Moving your thing. on. That's all you're good for here. That's why we bring it. Wow. I can't wait till you get knocked out at this show. <laughs> oh, boy. So Jeremy the Butcher Madrox, one of the most successful champions in war wrestling history, had, I believe, it was 16... Successful title defenses in six months. Um, Not only for us, but that's a great thing, too, is we have a relationship with a lot of other promotions. Mm -hmm. So Madrox, uh, one of his title defenses was uh, against Juice Jennings before Jennings beat him last year in a different promotion in Southern Ohio. So he's taking on Billy Jack Sampson, who, what do they say, 6'4"? That dude's a beast. Yeah. It's Pretty much ridiculous. try and run into a brick wall. You'll probably have more success. Oh, Lord. So <laughs> the technical wrestler against the monster. And he's a cousin. He's he's the cousin of uh, Jock Sampson, who's just about the biggest. His meanest. manager. Yeah. He's just about the meanest son of a bitch you're ever going to meet in professional wrestling ever. Yeah. yeah he, I mean, uh, I don't care. You, Abdullah the Butcher, I don't care who you say <laughs> that, that who's mean. Jock Sampson is meaner. He is just a mean 
son of a bitch who doesn't care about anybody but himself, and which that's. I mean, that's why he is where he is in this business. So now he has a match later on in the night. Yeah, he's yeah, actually he's in the main, the main event, event in a oh, cage yeah. match against uh, Juice Jennings, a guy who he's tried to torment in every single way. He's already torment. He can't beat him for the belt, so he's stolen it. I mean, he stole another promotion's title, just walked around, called himself the champ. Now you're telling me a giant cage over a whole match like they did back in the old days. You guys are gonna have that. Yes, a steel cage. Yep. <laughs> Right and it's the actually the second last year. Actually, it sounds though. like a lot of work to put together. Uh, oh, it's, we it's have actually, a, but we have a really good crew yeah, of people have, that I guarantee we'll you we've got done. the best crew in independent wrestling. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll say last anybody. year actually though at War X we had two cages because there were two rings put together. We did the old school war games all the way around. Familiar so with that? Picture them putting wow. that one together. It'll be half as easy for them this time. It's a huge production, man. Yeah, Especially yeah. last year because we had a lot of. You know, whatever by gimmick matches, yeah. where we built to all of them, so they all made sense. But you know, that one as the main, we had people from what's Big Tom say, fourteen states. I had and, relatives fly in from Canada. Florida just to watch that match. Wow. Flew in the day before, left the day after, but just to come watch that. As match. I recall, I remember Jock Sampson's team being on the losing end of that. Shut up. So. <laughs> So a pretty bad son of a bitch in himself and Dusty Dillon. He was bad at it. I think Robbie Starr was the one that tapped out. But it wasn't whose team won? It was Dusty's team. Concluding Speaking the year, of Dusty, they beat the hell out of each other. That's only because Dexter Dementia. I'll tell you what, you want to see that's some only hard, because hard Dexter hitting matches, Dementia. Though. Look up any match between yeah. Dusty Dillinger and Jock Sims. That was only because Do- Dexter Dementia wasn't on the other team. Because if he was, Dillinger would have lost because that's what he do- does against... Uh, Dexter Dementia, which is pretty much why I think Dexter Dementia picked <laughs> Dusty Dillinger to be his opponent at War 11. I mean, it's his retirement match. He's retired from wrestling. Why wouldn't you want to go out on top? Why wouldn't you want to pick the guy that you've beaten more times than Jock Sampson has beaten his wife? Oh, oh my. <laughs> wow. Seriously. She even a- That's, uh, That's pretty personal. I mean, oh, over the 11 wow. years, over the 11 years when these guys have you wonder up. why I hope Sherman yeah. Tank kicks the shit out of him. Well, these guys have matched up. Dusty's basically been Dexter's bitch. Oh, Every wow. time. Last man right. standing, leather strap matches, you name it. That's a lot of talk. Jesus. I think I there's a reason why. Stuff. I don't, I don't yeah. I'm uh, not say nothing. Dusty and Dexter are two of my favorite <laughs> people because they have something in common. Dang beard off. Yeah, they're, both <laughs> Dusty and Dexter have both knocked him on his ass on repeated occasions. I've, oh. And I've managed them both, and I can tell you. I think you guided their careers right in the toilet, too, for a while. Hey. <laughs> we, we, me and Dusty went over to Indiana. Dusty had titles, and then it wasn't until after he dumped me that he lost every title he had in Indiana. So, oh, boy. Wow. And what has Dexter done since he's left me? He went back to the fat-ass postmaster. Ain't done nothing for him except for, hey, maybe we should both retire. And do a damn thing. Got a lot of problems with a lot of people. <laughs> I got I'd be worried going into it's this. It's a wonder event. you don't get your ass kicked more. Nobody's going to kick my ass. Nobody has. But as long as I got Chris Hall with me, as long as I've got Jeff Holloway with me. I don't see Chris Hall me, now. Well, I don't no. see anybody here wanting to kick my ass either. That's there ain't right. nobody here with a, that can touch me. I don't want to kick really? your ass. Really? No. Absolutely. Because you probably need to look again. Excuse me. Whoa. What the hell are you doing? You're trying thing. to tell me. Frank, you got this you're trying guy. to tell me that I was nothing without you. Frank. And now you're going on about how Dexter's going to retire and everything. I tell you to retire, but you never had a career to retire from. All you did was suck off the backs of everybody else, like the little oh. pig that you are. So you're sitting here to these nice guys talking all this crap on the podcast when nobody's around. I had to bring my kid's guitar in, get it fixed. Here I'm listening to everything. What do you got to say for yourself? Oh, my God. What do you got to say? I told you. Sir. What do you got Shut to say? Up. I told you. You have absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> Frank, are we going to have a problem here? Is it a know. fact? Do you Are you holding any titles now? Am I holding any titles? Who are you holding titles with me? <laughs> I held one title with you. One. At a little shithole over in Indiana that you got yeah. me booked in because you got me kicked out of every other place because of your stupid ass attitude. I don't have an attitude. You don't have an attitude? No. You're full of Come shit. Come on, Dusty. Now, let's... Now, sir, sir, let's not just, do this. Let's not do this yeah, here. Do what? We're not doing nothing. We're stating facts here. 
I was on my way up. I decided to take you in a little bit. And all you got me booked in was that little Mexican hall over in Indiana when I held a title that was made out of what? Some dental floss and a hubcap. It's about the, all it was. We killed there. We killed there because they sucked. The competition was as good as you. That's good terrible. for nothing. I'm undefeated. Undefeated. Frank, maybe you should break him up. Bre- um, There's no break no, up. I, I, I'm, he ain't got the balls to try nothing. He's going to sit there and take it like the little bitch that he always has been. Oh, boy. That's... Oh, that's not that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Why is well, that not fair? Well, what, because because I state facts. Oh, the fact my, is, oh my. on the 18th, <laughs> you're going to get your ass kicked again oh my. by Dexter Dementia, and the only good thing that could ever happen is if your ass followed him into retirement. You, sir, should back up just a little bit, because number one. Your breath is really kicking. And for number two, I haven't been in a good mood in the last three years. So I think you should just back up. Let me go about my business. Last go ahead, years. tape your little internet thing. The last three years, is probably, that's the last time we were together. It's kind of medium. Oh. I doubt it. Medium? Okay, it's medium. <laughs> However, bringing this guy in dropped you down about three notches. So you're going to have to take that into account. So go ahead and sit here with uh, McCormick. Be the comic relief that you always are, whether you're behind a microphone or you're in the ring or you're on the side of the ring. It's all you are is comic relief. It's all you ever have been. That's why you're a comic book man. Saw something good and decided to latch on to it. So, whatever. We'll see you on the 18th because uh, Dexter Dementia, yeah, he's beat me. Yeah, I've beat him. But I was always able to beat you. Always. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> So stick that in your little purse and take it home to your wife. Oh, Lord. Have Ooh. a good time. Oh, jeez. Man, he's definitely getting personal there, sir. He knows he walked away. Yeah. Of course he does. He knows he's not out of the building yet, so you should probably just sit down and shut up. Oh, he's boy. going now. I can see him. With that. That's the ugliest guy. We got you making dance. sure that he's That is the, the door. ugliest guitar I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. So he's a... Uh, He's a country music star, then? Or he's a he wrestler? thought he was oh, at okay. one time. <laughs> well, this is a good but, place to get a guitar. Yeah. You, but um, what, what time we got here? We need to cut to a break here. Uh, we got about four more. Oh, oh my sir, God. God. Jesus, Lord. Oh. Man, sir. Oh, God. One of Dusty's greatest oh, hits right man. there. Oh. Just for you, Ripper. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Uh, Man, they don't have strings are you on paying it. for that? Uh, I, I get, I get the money thing. for it. I guess he's gonna have to stay longer to get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help your friend, sir? Jesus, Who's, who has a friend here? Oh, oh he's not. <laughs> uh, no friends here. Probably have to do something. <laughs> oh, oh I think I'm gonna cough up a lung. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, get some that's called attention. karma. <laughs> Well, well, I guess we should go to break. Yeah, uh, let's go to break. Go to break. Give me some medical attention, good God! Yeah, How get... about some music? We got music coming. Yeah, right? we got some... Why are you laughing? I can't help it. I don't know what's going yeah. on. <laughs> we got a musical guest. That hurts! Oh, a lot! Oh, my God. We got a musical guest, Addy, coming. I'll do it. So this. stay tuned. I may, have, I may have pissed a little. I'm not for sure. More wrestling. We'll see if this guy can make it then. All right. Thanks a lot, ctotv.com. Don't touch it! Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah.
All right, we're back on ZTO TV, and we're here with a couple really awesome guests. One a very, very special guest that I've I've known <laughs> for so fucking long. I'm gonna go right into wh- how I met or how I came to find Gromy. It was probably 1990. Found it. Yeah. <laughs> 19- I was lost until. Well, I mean, lost. I'm a kid way out in fucking Ada, Ohio, way out in the boonies. How right. well, you know? In uh, 1994, I was in school. Hey, do you... hey, this is an operating store. <laughs> That's right. This and, uh, business. Um, <laughs> 94, a kid hands me fucking headphones. Fucking Manson was on it. Smells like children. Changed my life, everything. Of course, it fucking sucks now, but what can you do? But back then, it blew my mind. And then, of course, I went to another... Fr- How do you get this? Grow me. What the fuck's that? You know, what? And it, it was this little store uh, by Igloo or whatever. That was the first one, wasn't it? Yep, yep. Nice. That was his first store, and I went there. Maybe three or four people could fit in the place at a time. Yeah, we had yeah, a rotating was... door. We had a, a fire fire code, I think it was four. <laughs> so we'd have people waiting outside. Okay, you in. Now it was like a red, red velvet rope sort of thing. Yeah. yeah I mean, but exclusive. then... Exclusive. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah that's... So I find... Exclusive only to special people like yourself. Yes, yes. so and that's yes. where I went. We couldn't get the CDs at... At the regular uh, record store in the mall. The, well, they don't even have those anymore, do they? There's one. Yeah. But, uh, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I came to, to find Grow Me Out. And if you were a fucking musician anywhere in this area, you know who you are. You know what I mean? Because Good or bad, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same age, man. Yeah. I grew up like two blocks away from here, so I... I I used to ride my bike to his, his shop and Absolutely. get the get the newest Metallica tape oh. cassette. Or tape. that very <laughs> rare yeah. local band that isn't around anymore, but he's still got a copy of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been several yeah. times. And I want to oh, also yeah. bring out the point of how important the bootleg videos. Well, you know the bootleg videos. I don't think they were bootleg then, but. Yeah, the, the underground video? Yeah, the yeah. underground yeah, video. Yeah, video. can I talk about this? Fan, <laughs> fan club releases? Sure. Yeah. You're talking called? about things that are yeah. probably 20 years old anyway, yeah. so there's a statue limitation. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> right. right. Uh, but, um... Which is basically, you know, most of the stuff. We didn't that's have just, the internet That's the sort of then. thing you see on yeah. YouTube now. Yeah, so you yeah. didn't know that. So, you yeah. could see these bands the, play. The idea of pirating uh, music was recorded off the radio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah which I think we all did in some Yeah. 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 And then, you, and then, and then <laughs> at that time, you used to record radio. your radio show. You yeah, you radio. had a radio yeah. show, yeah. too. Radio show. What was the years in that? What was that? I, I know. Think I, 96, 97, yeah. somewhere in there. And I would call in a lot. And I would be on air a lot. <laughs> every, every, every week, Josh from Ada. Yeah. Josh from Ada. I always thought that was his last name for a long time. Yeah. From Ada. And I didn't know his last name. It was also from Ada. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that, that was fun. And I, I mean, I love doing that. Yeah, you were uh, really uh, good at it. You know, well, thanks. And I heard Not a lot of The first views. couple shows, those were horrible. Yeah. But yeah, and it was fun because, you know, I was playing stuff before. Before they knew who there was. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd play Manson, I'd play Corn, I'd play, you know, Power 5000, I'd play Cold Chamber. That's what would always happen. You'd go to Gromies, you'd pick up a CD, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then, uh, like, two, three months later, the band blows up like crazy. It's like, what the hell happened? Or in some cases, two or three years later, you'd be on the other FM station, you know, who, you know, they initially make fun of me. I thought I was... I had to. Yeah, well, they, I mean, you know, some some of the people <coughs> at, the, at the bigger stations, you know, they would even make fun of me for playing corn. <laughs> you know, and then two years later, guess yeah. what they're playing? Yeah. Corn. Yeah, exactly. And they're cool for playing at that, but, you know, but. Yeah, the underground. That's the way independent, that's the way independent, like what you guys are doing. Yeah. That's the way the small stuff works. You know, we're always the ones, you know, we drive the bandwagon and everybody jumps on later on. You know. Absolutely. But the yeah. underground videos back to those were so important. <laughs> you don't understand because back then there was no internet. And even for young bands, you know, I was in a band with my friends back then. And to, to be, we were almost too young to go to shows too. But to, to see the people who we admired live to play yeah. was a huge learning tool for yeah. all well, young bands. I'm only here to help, man. I'm and, only uh, here to help. You know, and, we used to have an old Seven Dust tape we would watch over and over again. All our and friends before, came to buy those underground videos. Yeah. Before LeJohn had his druids all out yeah. there, he had like nubbins. Right. So it must have been <laughs> yeah, way it was a back. long time ago. Mini dreads, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that was really good. But uh, Jason Gilbert, um, I'm, I never met you before but since you know we had the Graves show, which we right. had here, and that's the first time I met you. But uh, you would re- recently got. A music store. Yeah. What led you to all that? Uh, 
got a job at Bob's Music. Okay, Bob's, nine, yeah. Eight, nine years ago. Ah, poor Bob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hit by a, a yeah. What was it? A, a, he was trimming trees and in the in the fall and just hit him wrong. Jesus, just, man, that's one of those weird. Yeah, really a, a cliche. Really makes you think, man. But yeah, if you're but around yeah, this area, you know Bob's music. I mean, they were yeah. around for ever. So I, I I never worked for Bob, but uh, one of my friends I was bitching about my job, and you know, one of my friends was like, "You should come work for over at Bob's." It was like. I don't know anything about guitars. I know how to yeah. play them. He was like, oh, no, I'm a drummer. You're all right. You think I know anything about guitars? It's like, <laughs> okay. And it was a learning experience. So, way. so eventually uh, I just soaked now in. He knows, now he knows more than most. <laughs> now I soaked, I soaked in absolutely everything I could. Absolutely. And uh, never, never once said, oh, I know everything. You know, still don't know everything, but... That's how you always learn more. Yeah, you got a nice little sh shop here. You got a lot yeah. of cool pieces here. Yeah. Like you were trip. checking out that, uh, that, that, uh, that dime bag model. Oh, yeah, razor back. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Well, try, yes. to, uh, try to keep a, a fun, open atmosphere for people to just hang out. And, yeah, music store with uh, being able to have bands in the back here. Music is, is art. fucking amazing. That's a really cool uh, idea. Every other, every other music store I've been in is very structured, very yeah. retail store. I want it to be a more fun, more loose atmosphere. And we're artists. We don't, we don't like to go into corporate, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, structured places. Walking to places. Sam Ash and get bothered. Right. <laughs> I don't know how many uh, musicians actually shop at the mall. Yeah, <laughs> right. On a regular basis, anyway. And that's just it. When, you know, when the opportunity arose for me to move next to a guitar store. Yeah. Record store, guitar store, same address. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's, you know, it's... And then you throw in a stage where we can have live bands. That's even better yet. Yeah, it and totally we have, makes sense. And that's the cool thing about independent stores, independent businesses in general, is that we'll do, you know, whatever. Whatever. You want to come in. Matter of fact, uh, one of the kids that plays drums in the Radio Pilots, he wanted to shoot a zombie movie in the store. Yeah. Which sure, is, why which not? Which is great. I yeah. That. yeah, and I think it's on uh, YouTube. And, yeah, yeah, you've seen it. called yeah. uh, Night of Living Hipsters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and, and where else are you going to shoot a uh, zombie movie besides the local record store? Especially since they where had to have made gonna... a mess. Yeah, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we had blood splatter. We, yeah, it was, it was awesome. You know, I ended up getting killed. I'm sure a lot of people like that. But, you know, <laughs> the, the turntable, the, right. the tone arm through the eye. And, and uh, you know, where can you do that? Local record store. Where can you come in and videotape for Zombie TV Takeover in a local guitar store? It's, it's you know, this this building itself is, I don't think people realize how cool this building is. Yeah, let's find out a little bit more about you. Let's, what's the little bromie like? <laughs> what's the little bromie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, like, let's let's, let's what? learn a little minute. bit more about you. Yeah, I know bromie since the music Who you been store? talking to? And she lied, man. Uh, little bromie, what the hell are you talking about? Um, what's little bromie like? Um... What, like back in the... Uh, yeah, did, were you in bands now? No, no. No, never in bands. Well, actually, yeah, I'm sorry. What was I thinking? Uh, well, yeah, I was in a band for a little while, just a few years ago. Oh, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. but growing up, no, huh? Oh, no. So, um, all right, in a nutshell, learn to read by reading record labels. So, like, uh, my older cousins and older brothers and sisters and crap like that, they'll tell me, oh, I remember when you were just this big, we'd sit you in the middle of the floor, and, you know, around Christmas time, and bring out records, and you'd read. That's how I learned to read. So I could learn to read when I was, like, three. And they've got pictures of me, you know, there's one of, like, I saw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Michael Jackson. <Yeah. laughs> okay, <Well>. sure. <laughs> yeah, when I was three, yeah, no, there wasn't. Jackson. No, there's really <laughs> yeah, um, but there's, there's five. Yes, um, big. Okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah, when, I was three, when I was three, it was only Jackson two. Oh, okay, okay, so well. yeah, um, but uh, yeah, and there, I, somebody even got a picture of me when I was like two, just staring over the the, the edge of a console stereo. Oh, wow. You know, and, and it's like so. I guess it was kind of meant to be something in this. So business. you always <laughs> sold records. There was never any bullshit jobs. And, Oh sure, well we all have oh, okay. well, jobs. Yeah. You know, um, let's see. Well, there's the, the you know there's that proverbial you know delivering newspapers when they had newspaper carriers. You know, um, worked at a carryout, stock and shelves. Um, worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken, fast food. Um, okay, so you've done those, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's those, and um, God, I think that was about it. And then started working at uh, Mind Dust Music in eighty 
four. Yeah, coming up. What's that? Mind coming music. up in coming up in April will be thirty years in this business. Damn. Yeah, I know. You're still kicking it though. Yeah, what? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I went away for a second. Sure, um, yeah, thirty years. Mind Us was a, a record store out in Elida. Uh, um, currently, there's a, a, another guitar store out there, Goodwins. They do a great job too. Yeah. Um, so that's the nice thing about independent businesses. We all stick together. Yeah, you know. Um, got to. And um, yeah, it was a store out there, um, one eighteen West Main Street, Elida, Ohio. And Randy had been in business probably ten years before I started working there, and it was a cool store. I mean, it was the cool store for people my age and older. That was, that was our Gromies. Yeah. For you, what Gromies was, yeah. that was our Gromies. And getting hired in there, that was awesome. Because it also was a record label. We had seven, seven albums released on that label. Um, you know, yeah, and it was, you know, and the rest, as they say, is history. You know, worked there for five years, six years, and then Dave Gass that owned, owned Hard Audio, wanted to open a record store, got a hold of me. I was running that for a while, and then putting... You know, putting 75 hours in a week for someone else gets old. Yeah. So I quit there and then wanted to get back into it. I told the people at NRM. I told the people at Camelot, which is the old FYE. It's like, hey, I want to get back into business. And um, Camelot, man. Yeah, Show Camelot. Right. Camelot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that was down by Lazarus. <laughs> yeah. That was oh, wait, Macy's, yeah. In the mall, right? The mall, yeah, yeah. yeah. M-A-U-L. <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> to your soul. Um, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so when I told them, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to get back into it. Um, made me feel real good because they almost had a race to fire somebody to hire me. Wow. And, you know, and, and then uh, then I started my own store. Like, you know, you guys were talking about Bob music, yeah. you know, Bob, or Bob earlier, yeah. you know, what happened with him. Um, started my own store because my nephew um, was killed in an accident in the home when he was 12. Wow. You never know. Live like you were dying, man. Yeah. And it's like shit. You never know when it. Pardon my language. Yeah. You never no, know when it's. You never know when it's your time to go. And that happened. And and a friend of mine owned the Ugly Drive Through. He's like, dude, we got a little spot up front here. You want to oh, open? You want to open a store? You know? And like, you never know. So yeah, let's do it. And yeah. and, uh, and that, that was you know that was a fun store. Yeah. That yeah. was a fun store. You know? was... Uh huh. Made the front page of Lima News at that store. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. It was awesome. So where does Gromy come from? Where did you get that name? My Where'd mama you... named me that. Oh. That's not my story I'm sticking to. It. All right, well, that's... Yeah. Well, we'll Next question. question. Next question. What do you got? You got <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just got wondering. It's, a, it's a Joan Jett reference, and, yeah. and I'm a big Joan Jett As much as you guys are involved in the local music community, because you do, like, uh, what do you do, karaoke and stuff? or not Karaoke, karaoke DJ, I run sound for yeah. bands. I see you're always uh, got, busy with something. I got... PA system. Yeah, yeah, I have always, stuff. You're always busy. I do stuff with stuff. I was just wondering what <laughs> yeah. some of your guys' favorite live shows you've seen would, would be. I know you probably have a storied career of well, live uh, events. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, was say, I had a year where I, where I pretty much just traveled from uh, show to show, but uh, some of the most memorable ones was uh, Pantera. Definitely. I wasn't even involved in the pits, but I just I just remember <laughs> standing on top of the hill just watching this mosh pit, and there's a mosh pit over here, and there's a mosh pit over here, and every once in a while, they'd just be surfing around. Every once in a while, they'll collide together, and all three of them will collide together, and they'll split apart. <laughs> was that at uh, OzFest by any chance? No. Um, oh, it was just got crazy. I, it was some <laughs> festival. I don't remember what There's festival. big festivals with Pantera in their high. They're, yeah, they're yeah, exactly. High. It's in their high of their career. That was... Insane. I'm glad that you know I got to see it when I did. I'm sure yeah. that's oh, yeah. a big one. That's a big uh, one. I got to see Nine Inch Nails back in their heyday. I got uh, got to see um, System of the Down. They're probably one of my favorites. Andrew WK was freaking uh, awesome yeah. live. Yeah, he was <laughs> fun to watch live. I think I seen him at a Warp tour or something like that. It yeah, some weird thing I didn't expect to see him at. I got to eat shrimp kebabs with the bases for Green Day. I still can't remember his name. I even met him. Is that Trey Cool? That's Trey the, the drummer. He's the drummer. He's the drummer. Yeah, I was walking backstage at Warp Tour and just walking. You know, everybody left after all the shows were done. Mm -hmm. Even the security was gone. And I was just uh, just strolling around <laughs> and while everybody's tearing down. And I look over and I, was, I think my car's over there. And I cut through some buses 
as I'm cutting through buses, I look over and it's like, is that? He was sitting with a couple guys at a barbecue going, Walker, who like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, and it seemed like the guy, the guys that were with him were just kind of like sitting there going, I don't really want to talk to him. He's famous. And I'm all <laughs> being social. Just, what's up, man? He's like, and so he's very welcoming. He's like, you want some shrimp? Sweet. Here, have a beer. <laughs> that was always the cool thing about Warped Tour was there was a lot of like camaraderie and yeah, there was like you go to Ozfest, there'd be a guy getting his face piercings ripped out down over here. But Warp Tour is always like friend, much friendlier. I guess that's yeah. because they make you talk to people to find out who's playing where. Yeah, yeah I thought it was a mess when I went. It, that's what they said. <laughs> yeah, really? I just well, I didn't know who the fuck to listen to. I go over here, listen to this guy, yeah. go to this fuck with. They right. want you to have to communicate with yeah. people. I'm listening. Right. This guy I can hear this band over here a little bit. It's, it drew me nuts. See, I, 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 went, I think it was the second Warp Tour I went to, and it was. I thought it was great. You know, I mean, the, the only the only bad thing is when you do huh. those multiple stage festivals, I, is crap. I want to see this person yeah, on this stage, and they're attacks. playing at the same time, and it's like you're getting yeah. pulled in one direction. I just but, thought it was so cool when Tino from the Deftones just come riding up on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. oh, he like, does that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, like, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorite concert memories. Do you, I don't know if you were there. Um, it was at one of the Ozfest. The disturbed singer, mm. uh, David Draymond or whatever his name is, rode up to the second stage on a bicycle. <laughs> And one of the security guys stopped him. It was like, and you could see from a distance, he was like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. You can't ride a bike through here. <laughs> and yeah. then you clearly seen him go, but I'm David Draymond right. from Disturbed. Right. And then the guy's like, I don't think you should have that bike. It was this a whole conference. And then here comes Cradle of Filth. And they, of course, look like musicians that are going right up to the stage and right. nobody fucks with them. <laughs> you don't fuck with a guy that wears a wristband that has seven inch spikes. He on. is only four foot tall, so it's. <laughs> don't. He still don't <laughs> But you guys also write for the entertainer here in town, correct? Yeah, yep, Gilbert. Now uh, you own it. Or I you took run it yes, and I, you write I for it. I run the entertainer and uh, he writes an article. Um, yeah, that, that just happened November 1st. four months ago. Has it been that long? Yeah. Right on, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's a cool thing when he, you know, decided to take the other, because that's, that's yet another Lyme institution. Yeah. yeah. That thing's been around for 42 years. Wow. 40, and, our, yeah. and our pal Joe Dees writes, writes articles. Yeah, Joe Dees, <laughs> yeah. which we've worked with him in the past. He's, He's a, a funny He's, dude. Yeah, he writes an article <laughs> every week, and He's I look so forward awesome. to it every week. Yeah, yeah. It's so great. Yeah, but no, that entertainer, it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. Um you know, when he took over. And, you know, nothing against the previous owners, but they kind of, you know, kind of lost, you know, lost... They, they lost interest. They lost interest, yeah. 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 And it now takes a lot of work, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weekly. <laughs> it's a weekly it's job. Not, it's, a, it's nice, though. you got the website all set up, and that's slick. I yeah, mean, you, it, have it, to, you have to really... It's a delicate you gotta job. you got to keep it, it updated and, every, update you have to and everything. Keep or, your pulse on the, the scene and what's going on. And that's, if, if anybody knows anything that's going on in the scene... Any kind of entertainment from uh, plays Send to music to, to, to Facebook uh, bands com playing. Slash, yeah. slash entertain. <laughs> my, my cell phone number is right in the front of the paper. Send me a text. Yeah. Like, hey, what's, this is going on. <laughs> what's this Ohio theater? Uh, a few weeks ago, Ralphie May played there or whatever, the comedian. They said like 700 people was there. Is this correct? I was there. I, I could see that, yeah. I see the place yeah. having it, but then why do... <clears throat> there needs to be more, like... Uh, God, I'm tired bigger of bigger acts. You just want know, big think, bands and acts to come to your I'm tired of driving. You. I think you have to talk to the people. I'm gonna fucking the drive about three that. hours. To Go up there places. and get a job working there, and then book the acts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> simplest thing in the world. They, they, yeah, they are looking for somebody to head up their entertainment, but you have to. You have to really talk to them. And, yeah, and I don't really. know. I'm them. ready. Let's go. This is huge. <laughs> we're we're only there to help. The yeah. play if, if they ask for our help, we'll, we'll give it to them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? oh. And that goes with just about anybody in town. Mm -hmm. You know, they need they need help. That's that's what we're here for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> if any bands, any other venues, anything, you know, I mean, for God's sake, at least come in and hang up a flyer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, if we know about it, then we'll push it to all of our customers. I, I, I run a retail store. I sell music gear, but I fix people's gear, but. I am there to help the musicians. I'm, that's that's my main goal. Is if, if you break a string the day before a show, you know, come on in. I'll help you hook you up. Yeah. Uh, you break your headstock. That's break. 
your guitar. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yes, hey. which I don't. Wow. I yeah, don't I think, think uh, you can fix that. I hope that guy's see, that's, head's on. <laughs> yeah, me too. But yeah, you know, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I mean, this kid's pretty disappointed. But <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you lose your cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's from the uh, war wrestling interview you guys did. And Ripper that got hit with the guitar, he's a punk anyway. Oh, punk. Well, <laughs> yes. that's good. Yeah. Punk, if a punk so everybody's oh, he's actually No, I, I didn't even want to call him a punk, because punks are actually pretty cool. He's a chump. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was the commissioner for War yeah. Wrestling for a while, and, and yeah. Yeah, you had ties with War Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I was the commissioner for a while, got powerbombed through a few tables. Oh, my God. Well, because I'm the good guy, and I'm only here to help. Now, Jason. He got picked Jason's, up in the air. Yeah, Jason's adopted the I'm only here to help. Motto that I've had for years, and yeah, yeah I'm again, only here to help grow me. Yeah, we're only here to help, <laughs> and I'm only here to help. They they needed a commissioner to uh, what an awful position. to bring some order to uh, the chaos they had, and yeah, to be in like a suplex with your power bomb. Oh no! I oh yeah, well either either one, bomb. like your penis would be fucking <laughs> flailing in the air at you. I'd be more worried about my neck and back. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh okay, just me. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, but there again, I'm only here to help. They needed yeah. someone to help. Uh, bring some order to the chaos they had, and and how do they pay me back? Freaking power bomb me through a table, yeah. <laughs> bitches! Be sure to check it out, January eighteenth at right. the Aldi's Community Center. You can get nice. the tickets here. <laughs> get the ticket. Tickets available at Gromies. Yes. There you go. Yes. Yeah, There's, you can get. Tickets. It all comes full circle because we're only here to help. That's you right. need some place to sell your tickets for a show you got going on? We'll sell your tickets. You need someone to help promote your sell your your show? We'll help point your show. Yeah, yeah, tell me what's going on. Yeah. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. I, I, I can put it in the entertainer. <coughs> One-stop shop <laughs> to, yeah. to promote your shows. And that, and that goes nice. back, like I was saying earlier, 1206 West Rob Avenue is an amazing building. Even if I didn't own it, if someone else owned the record store, I would still say this is an amazing building. Yeah, full-service so record store, full-service guitar store, yeah. and a stage, and you got two people that run it that care. That's what we need. That's yeah. not, I yeah. mean, got to keep this thing alive. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, man, we appreciate it, Gromy. It's it's an honor. You didn't ask me some of my favorite bands for my favorite concert. I did. Yeah, he, kind of, he went into he, the next thing. What was the one, probably one of the best ones in recent years. Yeah. At Little Mexico, Nate, Ohio. Wow. Wow. That's the, the Mississippi, Mississippi Bones. Mississippi Bones. Show. I tell you what, I'm, I'm, yeah. a, pro, I'm a producer of that band. Uh, I record them, and that's not why I'm saying that. Why? Well, well, it is why. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> a few of the guys are my best are best yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah, those guys are, and and those are some kids like yeah. yourself that I've known forever. And it's like yeah, yeah, I always yeah. like when DFE I see was sold in your store. That's uh-huh. one of the records yeah. I bought. Here. Uh-huh. Was uh, Dusty ten Dolly. years after that was that independently was released I picked it up in your store yeah yeah and that's and that's why we I like to help the young kids yeah. you know the young kids and, and then when they grow up and they do shows like the show in Little Ada it's like oh look but at you it. are right you know? the Mighty Miss City Bones is definitely coming up they're practicing hard and they got a new CD coming out the music well I've heard it already and it's fucking amazing it yeah. really is yeah. it gives me chills and yeah. a lot of shit doesn't right do that, so hopefully the producer won't screw it no, up no it's right. impossible for him I heard a lot of auto tune yeah. auto tune <laughs> whoa what are you saying you're making That's fun of no no no, no, no. he puts it on there unnecessarily no <laughs> he just yeah. likes the robots you don't need an auto tune Mr. Collins <laughs> yeah but uh, where's some other shows we have shows here too we have shows yeah, here well, yeah next show Hoot coming hollers. up Hoot Hollers that was amazing those, every time they come through amazing yeah um, Hopefully we're going to have them back in here the Saturday before uh, St. Patrick's Day. And that's a cool thing we do with the shows here. Mm-hmm. They're usually Saturday matinee shows. There'll be a band that come through, either playing the Avalon downtown, play Mulligans. Um, it was a Sound Logic that played a show with Bones over Sound in Ada. Logic, yep. Sound Logic came in here in the afternoon. Nice. We do Saturday matinee shows. They're free, all ages. Wow. So if you got yeah. some 15-year-old kid, like you were talking about yeah. the videotapes you used to see, um, you know, you can't get into a bar. No. Come spend your Saturday afternoon at the local music stores. I, yeah, if we were that age, we'd be right up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, even we would still do it. Yeah, we would. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Michael I couldn't Graves. imagine. Yeah, the Michael Graves show. Michael Graves. Yeah. We had Michael Graves here. From yeah, Mar- Yep. Yep. Uh, they came which, in videotape. Yeah. Videotape and yes. the video was awesome. Yeah, Check it out. Editing, yeah. The editing was cool. Absolutely. Guys, that's, yeah. that's a good job. Marvin. Cool. I love Marvin. Marvin. When they Jeez. played here, they're like this jazz rock progression Don't remind fusion me, band. I miss that. Uh, <laughs> that's right, yeah. And uh, they played here. And these guys just got off the road with, now you're young so you won't recognize these names, but if you have any older viewers, they just got off the road opening for Alan Holdsworth, who's like guitar shredder. He's like, you know, there's the Steve Vai, Malmsteen, Satriani. Yeah. 
he's like right below, and if he had the push behind him, he'd, he'd fall. I mean, he'd blow those guys off the water. Wow. Marvin opened up for them on tour, and they had the Pat Metheny Group's rhythm section on their second. They played right here on this very stage. You know, so yeah, it's, we have, you know, great stuff going on at the local music store. Um, gonna try and get a hold of Frontier Folk, Nebraska. Um, they're out of Cincinnati. They're playing up the Avalon. Um, you can see if they want to come in and do a matinee show. And, um, yeah, you know, just stay tuned bunch to the of, entertainer. Bunch of local artists. And the they Facebook play page. Here all the time. Yeah, that's what we usually do with the matinee Cat shows. Cat Brennan, with, uh, them kids. <clears throat> yep. Um, um yeah, so we usually try to do with the matinee shows is the headliner, the out-of-town headliner, we'll have them play usually at four. But we'll try and get a couple local bands, give them a place to play. Nice. You know, and they'll play one at two and one at three. And, and um, did I mention they're free? <laughs> and they're all ages. No, you can't so you that. have no reason not to. Addie. And told, yeah. Addie. 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 Yes. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. And she she'll, plays here all the time? Yeah. And then, uh, well, then like I, record. I, I love Miss Maddie. Yeah. And then like record store day this past year. Uh, which that's a, maybe that would be part two of the interview. Record store day last year, we had live bands play from ten o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. Nice. Yeah, and we'll do that again third week of April. You guys have it happening here, that's for sure. Yep, mm-hmm. like to think so. It's good makes cool. makes it worth getting up in the morning again. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, for me, it was a little bit of a what's that? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This, this what's that? Re, I'm sorry. This, this rejuvenation for me, anyway. No chair shots. <laughs> yeah, no, don't, don't make me break you two apart. <laughs> We're not that violent. All right. I was just going to say, let's, we, we're going to end yeah. the show. Let's yeah, enjoy let's wrap a little, it up. I want to get her full name. What was, uh, who's performing for us? Uh, Addie. 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 Yeah. Just Addie? Yep. A-D-D-I. A-D-D-I. She has two eyes. Two, two eyes. eyes. A-D-D-I. She has, yeah, she has two eyes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Groby, thank <laughs> and she's, you so and much. She's been, she's been coming in for years. She's been, well, for years. You're she's my icon. She's been coming in for years, but she's been <laughs> supporting us, and that's what we, you know, we... We pass it back along. Awesome. You've supported me off and on for years, so you want to do a you want to do a video shoot in the store? Sure, that's, that's what we do. That's right. That's what we do. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. ZTO TV, January eighteenth. Go to the War Wrestling thing, and March fifteenth, we have a event in Ada at the oh, Main yeah. Street Live. We're going to be doing this in front of people on a yeah. stage, and hopefully, everyone will be drunk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> I'll be Give sober. Give us an though. edge. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, ctotv.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.
you're watching Zombie Takeover TV. I'm Ripper Blackheart, and you're watching Zombie Takeover TV. Oh, son of a bitch! Are you ready for a war? Hey there, Michael McCormick here. The big 11 year anniversary and Hall of Fame show is coming up on January 18th, 2014. And this is literally gonna be War Wrestling's biggest show of all time. It's so big that we're packing up and heading to the Allen East Community Center Gym in Herod, Ohio. VIP tickets go for $15 for reserved second and third row seats. However, with VIP, you're getting early into the show for a special members only meet and greet to take pictures with and get autographs from your favorite war wrestlers. There are only 160 second and third row VIP seats available, and we already have a sizable list of people who want tickets. All of those are offered on a first come, first serve basis. Once they're sold, they're sold. We will not be adding any other VIP offers in the future. With that being said, not only are you going to get the VIP treatment, but you're getting access to the War Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony and the 11 year anniversary show event. Here are just a few of the matches you're going to see. Dusty Dillinger will go one-on-one -on -one with Dexter Dementia. These two men started their wrestling careers the same time in the GWA in 1997 and have competed in some of the most physical matches in war wrestling history. They embody wrestling in respect. Now the two go face-to-face -face in what will be Dexter's last match. Will the demented delivery man get the best of Dillinger on his last stop in Lima? Or will Lima's favorite cowboy send the postman off into the sunset with his head hung low? Then, things are about to get hardcore. Relentless Ron Mathis looks to end the career of Bad Attitude Brian Beach by finishing a job he started several years ago by putting Beach on the shelf for a year with a shoulder injury. If the first two altercations between these two have been any indication, this is probably going to be one of the most violent matches in war wrestling history. Ron Mathis against Brian Beach in a Herod street fight. What happens when you put two behemoths in a match where the only way to win is to immobilize your opponent for a 10 count? That's exactly what we're going to find out when Sherman Tank squares off against his former Bad Company teammate Chris the Madness Hall. Will Sherman Tank be able to overcome the blatantly obvious three-on-one disadvantage when Hall has Ripper Blackheart and Jeff Holloway in his corner? Or will Hall emerge victorious in their nearly year-long feud? Chris Hall versus Sherman Tank in a last man standing match. Get ready for the painkillers as they look to regain the War Wrestling Tag Team Championship against the Scarbonis in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. One year ago, it was Vinny from Jersey who weaseled his team out of what should have been a ladder match at War X, but this time there will be no escaping TLC. One of the longest tenured tag teams in war wrestling, Vinny and Sonny Scarboni finally won the belts after a decade here in war, while the painkillers won them in their first six months. A fact that eats away at the Scarbonis, who are out to prove why they are war's best tag team. The War Wrestling Tag Team Championship, the Scarbonis defend against the painkillers in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. The main event of War 11? Jock Sampson takes on the War Wrestling Champion Juice Jennings in a cage. Since the spring, Jock Sampson has only cared about one thing, the War Wrestling Championship. Jock even went as far to steal the belt from Juice this summer and just declare himself the champion. On Saturday night, January 18th, Jock will learn that actions have consequences when there's nowhere for him to run as he's locked inside a steel cage with a real War Wrestling Champion. Will Jock finally truly behold what he is obsessed with or will Juice's record reign continue? Juice Jennings versus Jock Sampson for the War Wrestling Championship inside a steel cage. All of this on the biggest night in the history of war wrestling.